Rivian is showing signs yet again of being drastically immune to the EV slowdown that they we're seeing across the entire industry. In its latest third quarter earnings report, Rivian not only increased its production and delivery guidance for the full year, but increased the opportunity for people to invest in their products, not only in North America, but also in Europe. In the midst of a global automotive and EV slowdown, Rivian is one of the only startup companies that is improving its gross margins and reducing its operating losses on a year-over-year -year basis, all while it is ramping up production and eating up market share in its respective pickup truck and electric delivery van markets. This is a pretty big deal coming from a company that has only one manufacturing powerhouse in Illinois. Not to mention the fact that Rivian hasn't really raised any significant amount of capital over the past two years following its IPO in November of 2021. And the fact that the company doesn't really do nearly as much advertising as a company like Lucid Motors or even in some cases Tesla does. In my opinion, all these factors are coming together to not only make Rivian potentially an investor's dream, but also potentially one of the best startup stories in the electric vehicle space today. So why exactly is that the case? And what can we learn from Rivian's latest earnings support? Well, folks, those questions are exactly what we're going to try to address in this video. But as usual, folks, before we get into it, make sure to drop me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. So to start things off, folks, let's address the elephant in the room, which is news that Rivian's EDV is no longer exclusive for use by Amazon. This vehicle can now be purchased by basically any major fleet across North America, and Rivian offers two options with varying range, payloads, and sizes to really make sure you can get the right option for your company. Now, if you ask me, this is certainly very good news for Rivian and the overall EV market. Because when in 2019, the two companies partnered and Amazon invested more than a billion dollars in Rivian, the company decided to make this platform from the ground up exclusively for the company Amazon. It allowed the company to ramp up production faster than really any other competitor could. And with 100,000 orders from Amazon, the company was able to fulfill demand seamlessly as supply chain and production allowed it to. And now fast forward to 2023, basically every major city in the United States has one of these EDVs running around. And when I recently went to the West Coast in California, I actually witnessed a massive Amazon warehouse that had a whole parking lot full of these EDVs north of 100. Not only does Amazon now reduce its overall carbon footprint, improving its ESG score in the minds of investors, but it also boosts the bottom line for Rivian because as it turns out, the EDV is a lot higher margin than either the R1T or the R1S. And if you've watched any independent review of the EDV from automotive reviewers, is generally a really practical and very well-built van. It is a complete game changer in the delivery van business because not only is it quiet, smooth, zero emissions, easy to drive, but it saves companies a lot of money on gasoline and diesel. And to put things into real context, Amazon currently has around 70,000 semi-trucks on the road and as of 2021, had around 30,000 delivery vans, including those with combustion. And just last month, Amazon's official press release stated that they have an estimated 10,000 of the Rivian-built vans on the road. That is a whopping 35% of their total estimated vans on the road today, which is a pretty big deal given the fact that typical adoption for electric vans and commercial vehicles is a lot slower than that. I mean, just look at the other logistics startups. Line Electric, Lightning E-Motors, and so many other companies have failed to really ramp up production or even sell in any meaningful quantity their trucks or vans 
for short haul applications. Meanwhile, Rivian, on the other hand, just grew its total business to $1.34 billion, a growth of more than 150% year over year, with deliveries of more than 15,000 vehicles in the third quarter. And even if you look at the bottom line instead of just top line growth, the company has made significant progress in its operating income, down to around negative $1.4 billion compared to negative $2.5 billion as it was in late 2021. And although operating margins are still grossly in the negative, they have yet again improved to negative 102% for the latest quarter compared to a drastic drop we saw in 2022 when the company was actually tackling with much lesser competition. Despite this cash burn, the company still has around $9 billion worth of liquidity in the short term to cover any sort of near-term or long-term expenses. And with the 17% stake that Amazon has, it's hard to see Rivian not scaling up its production of both of its vehicle platforms, given just how much electric vehicles make a difference in everyday lives. And although, yeah, even though the market has slowed down a little bit here in 2023, this industry-wide phenomenon is not just exclusive to startups like Rivian. This is being experienced as a result of the inflationary forces from the pandemic, and as a result, shouldn't be something we should expect to last very long. And if the likes of Rivian can weather this storm as well as they've had so far in 2023, the chances for them to grow faster in the new economic age of EVs is predominantly bullish. And by far the best and most important part is realizing that Rivian, just like many other startups, is only selling expensive luxury vehicles right now and has not even stepped foot inside the mid-size crossover and more affordable SUV markets. CEO RJ Scringe has said this himself as well, but the company's main focus right now is ramping up production, reducing its operating losses so that it can have enough capital to produce a cheaper electric pickup and SUV. At the end of the day, that is what's going to spark the real growth for Rivian's margins and its profitability and set itself apart in the niche market that it's currently tailoring to. All these factors come together to make me believe that the growth we're seeing with Rivian right now is only just a start, barring any sort of black swan events. But as usual, folks, that is just my take on the situation. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below, and thank you very much for watching. Take care.